morning, and uh, we're going to continue dealing with it beyond just the battlefield of the mind or what goes through our minds, but even more importantly, There's many descriptions in Scripture, Paul specifically speaking about the mind of the Spirit. And um, when we begin to think or even realize, going beyond just ourselves, you know, what is on the mind of the Spirit? What is the Spirit of God? What are the thoughts that are being thought out? What, are, what is obviously... It's exciting when we hear things like, uh, I have not seen nor ear heard the things which are entered into uh, the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. You know, the things in dealing with us, but just thinking that God has thoughts towards us. It, it's, it's a powerful thing and something for us to grasp. Now, we know that his ways are higher than our ways, right? It's not even a comparison. We don't even try. But we do know that his higher ways, and, and wrapped up in his higher ways, that he actually is thinking something right now. Now, we have the passion to pray. We're, we're, we have not because we ask not. But more than just praying my desire, even though we believe that there's something that's in alignment of our desires with heaven's desires, that it's not just something we've thought up on our own, but um, even just going beyond just what is my desire that I'm praying for. God, this is a passion of, of my heart, but really radical folk, the gathering of dangerous people, take a step further and they say, God, uh, we thank you for the desires. We'll ask and we'll pray for those desires. But God, more than even that, God, what is on your heart? God, what is on your heart? What are you thinking right now? Lord, I want to know what it is that's on your mind. What are your thoughts towards me over the situation that I'm in? I know my thoughts, but God, what are your thoughts? And Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which not, cannot be uttered. And he searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, in the midst of our praying, don't you think there'd be some wisdom to find out what he's praying? What are his prayers that are going on right now? And as much as my desire is for him to answer my prayers, but the moment I can step even aside and outside of that and saying, God, I, I do desire answer to my prayers, but God, is it possible? Is there a way that I can be an answer to some of the things that you are groaning and praying for right now? Man. Oh, come on, somebody. I, I, I'm talking about even going beyond and, and finding out, God, what is on your heart? Obviously over my area, my city, but even over my life. The things I'm facing, I, I want a stone to take out the giant, but maybe God's going to say, I want you to praise. And then I'll set ambitions up. Or Maybe it's, I want you to be still and see the salvation of the Lord. And there's all these different ways. And I mean, I don't know. It's no, no secret. I, I, I love the medieval way of doing things. So I would love the stone and being able to take the enemy's sword and cut his own head off. I think it's biblical and profound and godly. I don't care what you say. I, I want to cut off his head with his own sword. But, God, what is it that you have for me? Is it something that I have to wait, which makes no sense to see the wind above the mulberry trees? Does that make sense? No, it does not. But it is an instruction that God will give for our circumstance. And instead of me pounding my fist to the ground on what I'm praying for, as I begin to say, God, what is it that you have? Does this make sense? What is it that, that, that you have, O oh God? 
And so if the Spirit is making intercession for us, I would love to know what he's interceding for me right now. Amen. And it might be something more powerful than the nicer car or the bigger house. <laughs> Just a thought. What is it that you are interceding for me, God? Because now we understand the power of agreement. But what happens if we get into agreement with what God is praying? Come on, somebody. You guys, you guys are looking at me like either you don't believe a word I'm saying or what I'm saying is if we come into agreement with what God's prayers are, how quickly are we going to see answers to prayers? Instead of saying, God, would you please answer mine and come into agreement with mine? How can I be in agreement with your intercession over my city, over my generation, over my life? We see glimpses of men and women in scripture that go on and like the psalmist in Psalms 40 verse 5. Many, oh my Lord, my God, how are thy wonderful works which thou hast done and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. He's being caught up, raptured up in this moment of realizing of all the amazing and wonderful works and thoughts that you have towards me. God's thoughts, God's ways that are higher than mine. If I go to that highest level of thinking, I want to be able to see, God, what are you, how do you see this situation? Psalms 139 verse 17. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. How precious are your thoughts unto me. See, this helps me to separate the lies from truth and what's going on. And what we're talking about briefly about this morning, if you ever are believing the lie that we're, God has left us alone or that he's not with us in the battle, we realize, no, I, I know. If I'm going through something, it's not that God's trying to teach me a lesson. He's not setting me up to go through torment so I can learn a lesson. Now, he can teach me a lesson in the storm, but I don't, it's not that I'm giving God credit for the pain in the storm that I'm going through. Can he teach me in any, in any season of my life? Yes. But am I going to sit here and give him glory for the storm? No. Man. When I begin to realize God's thoughts towards me and how precious they are, our Jeremiah 29, one of our favorites, I'm sure, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now, if I can tie up into the mind of the Spirit beyond even the renewing of my mind, this is that process of renewing my mind. But if I can, find, if I can come into alignment, God, to your thoughts that you think towards me, my insecurities won't be that strong in the thoughts and the light of what he's thinking of me. When I look beyond the mirror that stares back at me and I see through the eyes of God, I no longer see the shame, the guilt, and the weakness. But I see sons and daughters of the Most High God. I see a royal priesthood. I see giant killers. I see ones that causes the enemy to tremble instead of me worrying about what's around the next corner. Are you here tonight? Things begin to change when I come into alignment with his thoughts over my life. God has amazing thoughts of peace, not of evil. If I'm going through something evil, this is not God's thoughts towards me. He goes on to say in, in, in Romans chapter 8 that as long as we are called and we love him and called according to his purpose and we're walking in that and our love stays close to him, that the bad things he turns around for good of those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. So don't hear me that when you're a passionate pursuer and follower of God that everything's always going to be perfect. But even in the midst of chaos, you find that there is a table spread out 
even surrounded by your enemies. And regardless of what enemies surround you, dining at the table with the master, communing so I can find out what is his thoughts. That way, perfect love begins to cast out all fear. When I'm able to come in to the place of perfect love, fear of any insecurity, fears of being alone, fears of not being enough, fears of not enough, all vanquish in perfect love. Hmm. When we're crying out, blow a wind of God. How can we not but think in a spirit-filled church of Acts chapter 2? Come on. Of a church praying together in accordance to an instruction of heaven. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. God, we thank you for the wind of your spirit that blows through places and structures of, of buildings. Thank you for your wind that blows through the structures that you have created, God. Not just the buildings, but even the structures of flesh. Blow in such a way, oh God, that it's such an unfilling of our hearts and our soul. Now, it doesn't make sense that along with the wind, all of a sudden they begin to experience, they appear to them, cloven tongues as of fire. Remember, we're praying that the breath of God blow across the coals of our heart that engulfs and stirs a flame. I don't know in reference to what this all makes and how this goes. I don't think it's just one way or one explanation. But we do know in reference to Acts chapter 2, not only was there a mighty rushing wind, the sound of a mighty rushing wind, but there was also fire going on at the same time. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now we find people that are filled by the presence and filling of, uh, of the Spirit of God and they are speaking the utterance of the Spirit. We just read out of Romans chapter 8, the very utterances. Now they're coming into an alignment to what heaven is speaking. Now I'm not speaking my circumstances, my worries, or my concerns, but being filled with the Holy Spirit in such a way that now my tongue is in surrender to the Spirit of God. And the very things that are, the Spirit of God is speaking can now be spoken through a human vessel. Now we see this interaction of the mind of the Spirit speaking because what's going on in the mind is being produced out of the fruit of our lips. And you would think in the reference to all this, all this heaven's activity, that we know people will be rushing and bowing their knees and saying, God, I've got to have this. But that's not what was going on. Matter of fact, those that were on looking here saying, are these men drunk? <laughs> Isn't that what you expect to have in a move of the Spirit? For you to be uh, described as someone thinking that you're intoxicated? Because wind and fire always causes that, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and in reference to this, there is a sound of heaven that is released in such a way that they are gathering. Men from all different tongues are coming together from different generations, from different regions, are being drawn by the sound of heaven. And when there are people that are able to walk in such a place of surrender that they release a sound of heaven that draws the world to the place, even though they may not understand it, they can't quite put their finger on it, but they're drawn to the sound of heaven. And although they came with questions that were so far off from the truth that they were not drunk, <laughs> <laughs> and every man in their own tongue coming from all these places they marveled saying behold are not these that speak Galileans wow they're speaking beyond the place that they're from <laughs> I don't know where you're from but it really doesn't matter I don't know what your history is what you've been trained into doing but when the sound of heaven is released, it doesn't matter where you've come from because it's in that moment 
that the sound of heaven being released far surpasses any of your own knowledge or your training. And the greatest explanation comes. Why? Because God is waiting for a man or a woman to stand up in their generation in the midst of a sound of heaven to be able to bring the answer to the question they're asking. And that answer is, this is that. Peter stands up on that balcony, no longer cowering and backing away from 12-year-old girls or people and denying Jesus, but he stands up and he says, this is that. Amen. Now we find Peter having a boldness beyond his own personality to be able to stand in a place in a position between the world's question and heaven's answer and being able to say, this is that. That, which was spoken by the prophet Joel. You know, if you read Joel's prophecy, things that are happening don't really line up with what Joel was saying. Theologians could probably go, well, Peter, that sounds good, but you're missing it. <laughs> but it was a moment that was so true that a fisherman's able to begin to declare a prophecy from Joel. And he says, this is that which is prophesied by the prophet Joel. Thou will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. <laughs> hmm. As the worship team comes. Everybody's standing. Father, we thank you for that ability. Hmm. Where's the worship team at? Everybody grabbing a hand of the person next to you. Lord, we thank you for your ability to stand in the place between the question that's being asked of our generation and the answer of heaven that we're able to know what it is of the mind of the Spirit to give an answer beyond our education, an answer beyond our knowledge, that we're able to step and tap into what the Spirit of God is saying, that we may know your mind and your thoughts that are speaking over us, that we're able to come into agreement with heaven and begin to stand and pray the very intercessions and stand in agreement with what you're praying. God, that we know, understand, Lord, beyond the desires of our hearts being answered. We want to know what your desires are and the desires of heaven and what's on your heart, God, that we may not only just be stressed out over the answers to our prayers, that in some way we can be become an answer to your prayers oh God that we can stand in the place of this is that you are the answer to heaven's prayer why do I know you have breath in your lungs right now he has plans and purposes over your life it's for an expected end how precious are his thoughts over you who can number them who can know the sum Lord, that we may know you in such a way that we can understand what your thoughts are, that we can see how you see, that enables us to speak your words in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said.